Lyndon B. Johnson is very similar to Joe Biden. How are they the same? They're both Democrat socialists. Lyndon B. Johnson was the majority leader in the Senate. Does that sound familiar? He was vice president to Kennedy. Joe was vice president to Obama. He was appointed as the president after JFK was assassinated, then he was elected. His big socialist programs were the Great Society. The Great Society were big government programs to address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, transportation, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, and welfare the Office of Economic Opportunity, and big labor and labor unions. Now, LBJ had the Great Society, but Joe Biden had Build Back Better, and he still is working on it. The largest public investment in social infrastructure and environmental programs that is actually finishing what FDR started, that LBJ expanded on, and Joe Biden is attempting to complete. Socialism. Meanwhile, we are now $32 trillion in debt with record high homelessness, 40-year record inflation. We're losing the U.S. dollar as the number one world currency. We're losing our freedoms. Our government is one big, fat, bloated machine. And it's killing the American dream. This is Marjorie Taylor Greene warning Americans about all the horrific things that Joe Biden is trying to do as president. Like, for example, address problems related to rural poverty, education, and medical care. And um, do things similar to Lyndon B. Johnson, like passing Medicare and Medicaid. And finish what FDR started. One of the most successful and beloved presidents in the history of this country for his work growing the middle class and fighting for working Americans. Oh, the humanity. This really is just a perfect encapsulation of how completely out of touch Republicans are with the average American. Sure, to the right-wing MAGA base that's listening at the event she's speaking at, just the words socialism and Biden are enough to turn them frothing at the mouth, but the average independent voter who watches that clip sees a Republican acting like it is the worst thing in the world that Joe Biden would fight to pass policies that do things like improve education and reduce poverty. And this goes to a fundamental tenet of right-wing ideology, if you can even call it an ideology anymore. Their entire goal is to fearmonger about the ineffectiveness of government while they themselves are the ones intentionally breaking government to begin with. Also, they can leverage that to achieve some short-term election win, to scapegoat some minority groups, and to pass laws that give massive tax cuts to billionaires and corporations. But here's the thing, government works when you let it work. That is why programs like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and the Affordable Care Act, all of which were enacted by Democrats, by the way, are so popular. It's why the Inflation Reduction Act and the American Rescue Plan and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Chips and Science Act and other major pieces of legislation signed by Joe Biden have been so successful at creating record job growth while inflation is finally below 3%, a rate far better than most of the rest of the world. Here's another example from the Inflation Reduction Act that I think is a perfect encapsulation of why electing Democrats matter so much. Here's a graph of IRS response times. Because of the Inflation Reduction Act's IRS funding, the IRS was able to provide 87% of customer calls this tax season with live support, up from only 15% last year. The average time on hold decreased from 27 minutes to just four minutes. Because of the new IRS funding, Americans are able to get their questions answered quicker, their returns delivered faster, and wealthy tax sheets will finally face more accountability, reducing the tax burden on everyone else while cutting the deficit at the same time. And what did Republicans do? Not only did they all vote against this funding, they're now fighting to repeal it. In fact, that was one of the first things they voted to do when they took control of the House. Democrats did something that made the government work better for average Americans, and Republicans immediately, without hesitation, jumped at the first available opportunity to try to destroy it again. There could not be a clearer example of their party's central motivation. They want to scare you by ascribing a negative stigma to words like welfare and government, but have no problem with those same things when it's tax handouts for the ultra-wealthy or PPP loan forgiveness for themselves. Convenient, huh? And just as a side note, did you notice how Marjorie Taylor Greene slipped in Medicare and Medicaid in her long list of scary words? And at the same time, she's demonizing FDR, the president who signed Social Security into law? Yeah, I don't know how many times Republicans have to make it abundantly clear to us that they have every intention of dismantling Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid the moment they have the opportunity to do so. Remember, they've told us this over and over again. So that would potentially sunset programs like Medicare, Medicaid, 
and Social Security. Let's talk but, about but, Medicare. But Senator, but Senator hang on. Hang on. So it's not a Democratic talking point. It's in the plan. Entitlements ever be on your plan? Uh, at some point they will be. That's actually the easiest of all things, if you look. We should try to uh, look at entitlements, look at restructuring Medicare. What they need to be doing is looking at entitlements. Look at Social Security. Look at Medicaid. Look at Medicare. Turning Medicare into a voucher system. It's a really good start. Our entitlement programs, there's no doubt that we have to wrestle this beast to the ground. What's going on with the debt? It's very disturbing and it's, it's driven by the three big entitlement programs that are very popular, Medicare, Social Security and Medicaid. Uh, hopefully at some point here uh, we'll get serious about this. I'm here right now to tell you one thing that you probably haven't ever heard from a politician. It will be my objective to phase out Social Security, nice. to pull it up by the roots and get rid of it. Tell me if you're willing to cut spending for Social Security. I, I think everything has to be on the table. So you are willing to cut well, I think it, I think it's absolutely imperative. What about Medicare? We, I think it's absolutely imperative whether it's Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. Which leads me to ask, what has Marjorie Taylor Greene or any other MAGA Republican currently serving in Congress ever done to actually benefit their constituents? Because I can tell you what Democrats have done in just the past couple of years. They passed a historic infrastructure bill whose effects will be felt for decades to come. They recovered the economy with the American Rescue Plan. They passed the Chips and Sciences Act, which is already creating a massive amount of American jobs and will reduce our supply chain reliance on China. They oversaw the fastest job growth in U.S. history and record low unemployment. They passed the biggest climate investment in history and allowed Medicare to negotiate lower drug prices. They reauthorized the Violence Against Women Act. They passed the first gun safety legislation in decades. They passed the PACT Act for veterans' health care despite Republican opposition. They oversaw the largest reduction in the deficit in history. They codified marriage equality for same-sex and interracial couples into federal law to help protect it from the far-right Supreme Court majority. And I can go on, but the point is that Republicans stood in the way of all of those things. In fact, take a look at this new CNBC study showing the 10 worst states to live in, which are all controlled by Republican majorities. In order, from the worst, it's Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Alabama, and South Carolina tied, Missouri, Indiana, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Florida. And look, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and guess that maybe, just maybe, having a political party in charge that is hell-bent on taking away the rights of the literal majority of their own state's populations while doing things like demonizing their own state's largest employers, all the while relying on economic policies that have never once worked dating back to the 80s might not be the best at actually running functional governments. Shocking, I know. The fact is that there is one party that's interested in governing, and there's another that's only interested in tearing things down. If we want to defend our democracy, improve our economy for all Americans and not just the wealthy, defend our rights and freedoms, rebuild our infrastructure, save this planet from climate catastrophe, and so much more, the answer could not be clearer than it is right now. And if you needed a reminder, all you have to do is spend a single minute listening to the new face of the Republican Party, Marjorie Taylor. Green. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.